friends. Friends? We've only gone out together three times, and already you're telling me you just want to be friends? You never gave me a chance, and for that... You'll fry like a pork sausage. Not that I don't like you, it's just that, well, you're too nice a guy, I guess. I think I'd rather go out with someone more but unpredictable. Hello. This doesn't look like the Lincoln Tunnel, Sam. Looks to me like a marginally volatile hostage situation, Max. Ooh, does this mean we get to kick some puffy white mad scientist butt? Can't think of a reason not to. You'll be of no use, freelance police. With the flip of a lever, my ungrateful lunch date will be reduced to a half cup of disoriented atomic matter. I knew he wasn't a real doctor. Uh, shall I confront, subdue, and pummel the suspected perpetrator, Sam? Sick him up, little buddy. Hey, nice one. Yikes! Huh? He's not a real guy, Sam. Can I keep his head for a souvenir? Why do you suppose it's ticking? That's no head, Max. It's one damned ugly time bomb. Let's leave this criminal cesspool pronto. Good idea, Sam. Maybe we can ditch the head somewhere while the credits are running. Mind if I drive? Not if you don't mind me clawing at the dash and shrieking like a cheerleader. Sam, is pronto a real word? Goodbye, Sam and Max. I'll never forget all you've done here today. was a pleasantly understated credit sequence. I enjoyed the cheesy retro ambiance. What the hell are you talking about, Max? Sam, either termites are burrowing through my skull, or one of us is ticking. Oops, oh yeah. Max, where should I put this so it doesn't hurt anyone we know or care about? Out the window, Sam. There's nothing but strangers out there.
I hope there was nobody on that bus. Nobody we know, at least. Hello? Yes? 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 No? Really? Well, the same to you, Mac. Another confused census taker? Actually, it was the commissioner with another idiotic and baffling assignment. Does it involve wanton destruction? We can only hope. Due to the arbitrarily sensitive nature of the mission, we'll be meeting a bonded city courier out on the street. Ooh, smells like a fiercely thickening plot. Are you as confused as I am? More so. What should we do now? I'd like to spend the rest of the day harassing pigeons, but we should probably meet the commissioner's contact. I'm excited. Who is it? I've got something in my eye. Try digging it out with a fork. That always works for me. You're looking hale and hearty, little buddy. I'm a coffee achiever, Sam. Well, that's all. Never leave home without it. Yeah, we may need it to bribe slippery government officials. It's Max. I can't pick that up. That's the tuna fish sandwich I made last spring. It's a black light that Max uses to illuminate his rare 60s posters. We've been through a lot together, this TV and I. This phone represents unhindered contact with the outside world. Until they realize we don't pay the bills. This is no time for chit-chat. We don't go upstairs. Not since the accident. So, you want a piece of me, huh? Well, take a piece of this. Brutal. But very true to life. And there's one for your old man. I really respect Flint's business acumen. Please, Sam, don't use the word acumen again. Guess he had it coming to him. I can't talk to that. Gratuitous acts of senseless violence are my forte! You're such an adorable urchin, Max. Oh, it's a cute little hypercephalic kitten. He's adorable! Let's take him home and put tape on his feet. Hey there, little fella. You talking to me? 
It's times like this that make me want to lash out against a cruel world. Funny, I feel like that all the time. You must be the freelance police. Yes, but don't go blabbing it to everybody. I think he's kind of cute, Sam. Can I make a tennis racket out of him? Maybe later, Max. Right now, we've got a message from the commissioner to collect. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry, guys. I swallowed your orders for safekeeping. But well, now I can't seem to hock them back up. Hey there, little fella. You talking to me? Don't get smart with me, bub. Or my partner will floss every last crevice on his body with your whiskers. That's unsanitary, Sam. Hey there, little fella. You talking to me? Could you try coughing up our orders again? Sure. Sorry, no dice. Maybe I could help, Sam. I just love to turn this guy inside out. Ooh, that gives me an idea. According to these orders, something bizarre is happening at the carnival. I thought that was the whole point. Maybe we should check it out when we've got nothing better to do, like guinea time. Just a bunch of intoxicated pigeons. Somebody's been ripping off the U.S. Postal Service. Really bad food. Hey, I don't think Mr. Bosco's voluntarily giving away his money. Oh, I'm real terrified. A dog and a rabbit. Ooh, scary. Max, the smart-ass kid doesn't think we're scary. What do you think about that? That's telling him, little buddy. I think that punk learned a valuable lesson, Sam. Me too, Max. I didn't realize that the lower lip could stretch completely over the lid. Amazing. nation and blimey. The idea. So now what do we do? Now? Now we get in the bus and look for them, you idiot. I knew that. Huh. Get out of Mr. Bumpus way, you partially clad varmints. Who was that? I don't know, but if it weren't for the carefree innocence of this carnival, I'd be breaking his kneecaps. You're a demonic little imp, Max. Oh. Hey, what's the holdup? Sorry, boys, we are closed. I can't let you in. Insurance reasons, you know. Let us in, Olio Breath. Nope. I want a corn dog. You'd better have a better reason than that if you expect me to let you in. Who are those misanthropes at the gate? Which misanthropes? The short one with the bad hairpiece and the tall one with the dark flinty eyes. Hey, I just work here. Anything else? I'll be back. I can hardly wait. Weird. Creepy.
Check this out, Jack. We're the freelance police. Here's our authorization to be here. Now let us in before we replace you with a cheap renewable fuel source. Let me run this by the boss. Uh, I guess you can go in. But be careful. Cannibals can be dangerous to your health. <laughs> That was needlessly cryptic. I'd be peeing my pants if I wore any. Everything seems to be in order here. Sam, look over there! How dare you call in the authorities without consulting me? Well, I tried talking to you, but you were off wallowing in your own self-pity. Yeah, but... It's them! Hi, I'm Shep Cushman, and this is my brother Burl. Welcome to our carnival. What's left of it? I'm Sam. He's Max. We savagely protect the rights of innocence. Even cruelly twisted ones such as yourself. Selves. Whatever. Well, you sound like just the guys to solve our little problem. Walk this way. See this melted block of ice? How could we miss it? This used to be our main attraction. Your main attraction was a block of ice? Don't be dense. Our main attraction was a genuine, authentic, Real life, Bigfoot, on ice. Hey, let me get this straight. You want us to go traipsing all over the country looking for a soggy Bigfoot? I've never been traipsing before. Does it hurt? But Bruno must be returned to us. He's a brutish, ignorant beast with no sense of right or wrong. Hey, who isn't? Besides, he's kidnapped our second main attraction. Is that the block of ice? No, it's Trixie the giraffe neck girl from Scranton. She disappeared at the same time Bruno did. We can only assume that the monster took her when he made his escape. I guess Max and I could search for your missing freaks, but we'll need free run of the carnival to look for clues. Yeah, and free coin dogs, so we can uke all over ourselves. No problem. Here's an all-day free pass. Leave everything to us, and we'll have those abominations of nature back in your protective care before you can read the Koran. Didn't he fight Godzilla? It's a mange-ridden tuft of Bruno's Sasquatch hair. I think it would make a swell toupee for balding computer programmers. Don't be stupid, Max. He looks delicious. Hello? 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 <laughs> Jesse James severed hand. And it's still twitching. He's a nice guy, but sort of a drip. How Kafkaesque. It's a wholesome whack-a-rat game. I can't pick that up. No, really, I can't pick that up.
I want something. It's one of those impossible to win carny games that have been ripping off the American consumer for decades. I love capitalism. It's out of order. I don't think my head needs to be inflated beyond its already grotesque proportions. Excuse us. We need some help, and although you seem dangerously unequipped brain-wise, we've come to you for advice. Huh? Whoa, you're a big boy. That's why I sit down all the time. Do you guys all go to the same tattoo parlor or what? Actually, these aren't tattoos. It's my natural skin. What do you know about Bruno the Bigfoot? Who wants to know? We're the freelance police and we're in a race against time. And we're barefoot. All I know about Bruno is what the Cushmans tell me. Well, that was useless. You might want to try the Tunnel of Love, though. Rumor has it that one of Bruno's buddies hangs out in there. Oh, let's go, Sam. Oh, hush. Do you have any idea what happened to Trixie? Trixie, the giraffe girl from Scranton? No, Trixie, the talkative poodle. She's my best customer. She used to ride the cone of tragedy for hours on end. I love the way her neck used to whip back and forth when I cranked it up to full speed. Your sadism is a credit to your profession. Me and my partner want to ride the cone of tragedy. That's right, we've lost our will to live. I'm not supposed to, but what the heck. You two look like a couple of caring, non-litigious mammals. Strap yourselves in, and I'll turn on the cone. Oh, I feel tragically empty. Me too. It's as though an integral part of my essence has been ripped from my being. Let's do it again. Maybe later, chum. Hey, what happened to my carefully collected box of useless junk? Hey, Tattoo Boy! What? Where'd all my cool junk go? It must have fallen out of your coat while you were on the ride. Here's a claim ticket. Take it to the lost and found. Strength meter. I shudder to think of the number of promising dates cut short by this fiendish contraption. I don't think I possess the psychotic strength needed to ring the bell. Hey, Max. What? Can you ring that bell? Sure. <laughs> You're my hero, little buddy. Holy cripes on toast! Nothing personal, but you're the single ugliest thing we've ever seen. 
Well, there was that computer game developers conference. Have you lost something? I've lost a whole bunch of neat junk. You must have been gifted with psychic powers to make up your obvious physical shortcomings. Bad deal. Have you got a claim ticket? Sure. Wait here while I search through the back room. Well, here's all the stuff we've collected off the Kono tragedy today. It's all yours. I feel whole again. It's more money than we'll ever need. It's a powerful refrigerator magnet that says World of Fish on its side. I wonder how that got in there. spontaneously grew antlers, he still wouldn't be this ugly. It's a carousel of bootleg Sam and Max portable car bomb games. I've already got one. It's a box of pecan flavored candies. I gotta go to the bathroom. Are you in charge here? Don't I wish. I'd have to go to Snucky You for another six years before I could run this place. But enough about me. What can I do for you? Snucky You? That sounds exciting. Or at least distracting. Oh, it is. Snucky You is where all Snucky's employees are sent to learn the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs, the overs, and the unders of the amazing gastronomical and cultural phenomenon that is Snucky's. Fascinating. No, it's not. Humory. At Snucky You, we're given intensive courses in patty pounding, choosing the right button for soft drinks, and the all-important pickle jar opening. I had no idea you were so rigorously trained. Hey, I can open any jar in the country. Cool. No, it's not. Now, how can I put all that snucky you training to use for you? Are you sure snucky you's not in the bowl coalition? Positive. Now, what can I do for you? Hey, can you open this for me? Sure, ain't a jar made I can't open. Anything else I can do for you? Do you know anything about Bigfoots? Only what I read in the weekly International Evening Inquirer Star. Anything else? I'd like to buy this. Do you have any money? Of course I do. Here. Will that be all for you today? I'll also take these disgusting pecan treats. Anything else? What can you tell me about these? That's a box of our world-famous Snucky's pecan-flavored candy, beloved treat of couch potatoes everywhere. Anything else? My little buddy has to use the facilities. Facilities be damned! I need a bathroom! They're in the back. Here's the key. There's an awfully big rasp attached to that keychain. Out of toilet paper? Nah, we just had problems with thugs stealing our restroom keys. They're the cleanest in nine counties. The keys? The restrooms. You need some help, little buddy? I think I can handle this myself, Sam. Now, anything else I can do for you? Nothing. You have no idea how often I hear that.
Max. Are you as confused as I am? More so. I think we should keep the rasp. You're probably right. No one deserves to use restrooms that clean. Well, that's all. than to serve in heaven. Milton. Heaven is a place where nothing ever happens. David Byrne. Wow, a loving recreation of that Evelyn Morrison classic, Revenge of the Gill Guy. Probably should get out more, Sam. It fits perfectly. It's a nifty one. sooner. Just another random acts of violence. Suspects. Hmm. Get off of there, Max. Why? Check this out. I'll never shave again. You never did. Just another random acts of violence. I can't pick that up. There, that should get things running again. He's not my type. Who are you? I'm Doug, the Bull Man. Who are you? I'm Sam, he's Max. We fight crime. And we like long walks along the beach. What do you want from me? What the heck are you, anyway? I'm a mole man. Figure it out. I think he's a mole man, Sam. You know, watching too much TV is super bad for the eyes. Why do all you squishy, poorly focused blobs say that? Never mind. Do you know anything about Bruno the Sasquatch? Bruno the Sasquatch? Why, the stories I could tell you. Stop him, Sam. He's gonna tell us a story! I first met Bruno 25 years ago in Saigon. And then there was the time we all had our taxes done by a platypus, and... Shut up! For God's sake, just shut up! Look, we just want to know where Bruno is now. Gee, 
I have no idea where he went. Maybe you should talk to my uncle. Your uncle? Yeah, my uncle Shavuul. He's really into Bigfoots. When I was a kid, he used to tell me stories about giant Bigfoot parties, where all the Bigfoots of the world would get together and dance Bigfoot dances and... That's great, kid. Where can we find your uncle? I don't know. He disappeared a short time after he helped build the largest ball of twine on Earth. I think I may weep openly. Look, you two seem trustworthy. Oh, we are. Yes, you can trust us as far as we can throw you. So if you bring me some pecan-flavored candy, I'll give you my key to Trixie's trailer. I'll also tell you a big secret about how Bruno escaped. Why not tell us now? Because I'm hungry. Here, I thought you might like some candy. Thanks. Picard's my favorite. Hey, you're all right. Take this key as a token of my appreciation. Wow, this is some key. Okay, Sam, let's get the hell out of here. Wait, I've got a great story you should hear. <sighs> Keep it short, kid. My partner's got a low tolerance for long stories. Well, it all started the day before today. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's not widely known, but Trixie had fallen in love with Bruno. Every night, she'd sneak into the freak show tent and read to him what she imagined to be his favorite bedtime stories. She seemed as happy as a self-mutilated parody of nature could be. But she could never truly be happy until her beloved Bruno was free. Finally, she decided to do something about Bruno's predicament. She begged Flambe, the fire breather, to free the Bigfoot from his icy cage. Flambe took pity on poor Trixie and liberated Bruno. And the happy couple haven't been seen since. Hell of a story, ain't it?